My name is Dr. Cami Smith from CDC's Viral Special Pathogens Branch. This presentation will cover important information for medical providers about lymphocytic choreomeningitis virus. At the conclusion of this session, participant will be able to describe lymphocytic choreomeningitis virus, or LCMV, describe the epidemiology of LCMV, describe two methods for diagnosing a patient with LCMV, identify the parameters of clinical management for LCMV, and describe your role of practice as a team member when diagnosing or treating patients with LCMV. Lymphocytic choreomeningitis virus is a single-stranded, negative-sense RNA old-world mammarina virus. With global distribution, the main reservoir for the virus is the common house mouse, Mus musculus, which can carry and spread the virus throughout its life. Infection in house mouse populations may vary by geographic location, though it is estimated that 5% of house mice throughout the United States carry LCMV and are able to transmit the virus for the duration of their lives without showing any signs of illness. Other rodents, including hamsters, guinea pigs, and gerbils, can also carry the disease. LCMV can be acquired by humans through rodent exposure, specifically exposure to secretions or excretions of rodents. This may include direct exposure through bites or scratches, or through indirect exposure to droppings or nests, or through eating contaminated foods. Other routes of transmission include transplacental transmission from mother to fetus, or transplantation of an infected organ. LCMV is not known to be transmitted person to person through routine contact. LCMV is currently not a nationally notifiable disease. Therefore, the true burden and distribution of the disease within the United States is unknown. Several serologic studies conducted in urban areas have shown that the prevalence of LCMV antibodies in human populations ranges from 2% to 5%. Outbreaks have been caused by infected rodents from pet stores. Several cases have been identified as transplant-associated infection due to transplantation of infected organs. People typically develop symptoms 8 to 13 days following exposure to the virus. In immunocompetent individuals, approximately one-third of people who acquire LCMV are asymptomatic. Of those who do experience symptoms, the infection course can be biphasic. The initial phase, which can last up to a week, can consist of fever, headache, myalgia, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, and malaise. In some cases, after a few days of recovery, this progresses to the second phase, which typically presents with the neurologic symptoms. This phase can consist of meningitis, including fever, headache, photophobia, and nuchal rigidity, encephalitis, including drowsiness, confusion, and sensory disturbances, and or motor abnormalities, such as paralysis, meningoencephalitis, acute hydrocephalus, and rarely myelitis, including muscle weakness, paralysis, or changes in body sensation. Groups that are at high risk for developing severe disease from LCMV infection are immunosuppressed individuals, including transplant recipients, pregnant women, and fetuses.
Immunosuppressed individuals, such as organ transplant recipients, typically experience a severe febrile illness, which may include fever, abdominal pain, hepatitis, altered mental status, or seizures. This often rapidly progresses to multi-system organ failure. The mortality rate for LCMV infection in immunosuppressed individuals is estimated at over 70%. Infection during the first trimester of pregnancy can lead to spontaneous abortion. Infections during the second and third trimesters often lead to congenital abnormalities, including hydrocephalus, periventricular calcifications, and chorioretinitis. Fetal mortality is 35% and 70% will experience long-term sequelae. Laboratory findings in the initial febrile phase of LCMV can include leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, and mild elevations in hepatic enzymes. During the second or neurologic phase, evaluation of CSF can reveal pyocytosis, increase in protein, and decrease in glucose. Commercial testing is infrequently available. However, CDC offers no cost confirmatory testing. Diagnosis is typically made using serology to detect IgM or IgG antibodies. In acute infection, virus can also be detected through PCR. Metagenomic next generation sequencing can detect the virus and identify segments of the genome. Fear infection, including meningitis, encephalitis, and meningoencephalitis, should be managed in a hospital setting. The main treatment for LCMV is supportive care. There are currently no approved medical therapies for LCMV. Although ribavirin has been shown to be effective against LCMV in vitro, there is no current evidence to support the routine use of ribavirin in humans. As a medical provider, you play an important role in identifying LCMV. Keys to diagnosis include early identification of symptoms and risk factors, and high clinical suspicion in the following situations. Aseptic meningitis, febrile illness or multi-organ failure in transplant recipients, neurological illness in immunosuppressed patient, ill pregnant woman, miscarriage or fetal demise, and newborn with hydrocephalus, periventricular calcifications, or chorioretinitis. Overall, rodent exposure should be avoided in immunocompromised individuals and pregnant women. On the bottom left of this slide, we've included a resource for rodent control. Increased awareness regarding LCMV transmission risks among medical providers and transplant recipients can lead to prevention and early detection. Of note, LCMV is not currently a nationally notifiable disease. Therefore, CDC receives results on a voluntary basis. As a result, the true burden of disease in the United States is unknown. No-cost LCMV serology and molecular testing is available through CDC. Medical providers are encouraged to report LCMV cases to improve domestic LCMV surveillance. This collaborative effort will help us to better understand the true burden and distribution of this important but underappreciated pathogen in the United States. To report a case or request testing, you can contact your state, tribal, local, or territorial health department who can consult with CDC regarding testing. Here is a list of references cited in this presentation. Thank you for your attention.